Councilmember Husnick? Here. Councilmember Valento? Here. Councilmember Erickson? Here. Councilmember Roberts? Here. And Mayor Bain? Here. I'd like to invite everyone to rise and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Council, we have an agenda before you. I will entertain a motion to approve or any changes. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Oppose and our agenda is approved. Our first item this evening is open forum. Open forum is any parties, we have open forum at every meeting um, and is um, any interested parties opportunity to address council on any topic of your choosing. Um, I do I do know that we do have an appeal this evening on the agenda, which is our first regular agenda item for the Northern Nat Natural Gas Appeal. If you are here to speak on that topic, you're welcome to make a comment now in open forum or else we will have um, um, an opportunity for a public comment period as part of that appeal as well. We will first hear, hear from the appellant. We'll hear from Northern Natural Gas. We'll have an opportunity for any um, council questions. And then we will, as part of council's consideration, open that up for anybody else that wants to speak. So if you're here to speak on that topic, you're welcome to sp speak now or on any other topic now. Or you could wait until we have the more formal open hearing or public hearing portion of that meeting. Is there anybody that would like to speak as part of Open Forum? Go ahead. And if you could please address, um, come to the podium and start with your name and your address for the record. And welcome. We're glad you're here. Hi. My name's Emily Jelfs, address 18150 July Ave North, Forest Lake. Um, and I'd just like to quick mention, I did just receive this from Abby Whitman about an hour and four minutes ago through an email. She originally addressed me uh, previously stating she'd send them over prior to the meeting. Uh, she unfortunately responded back and said that she had forgotten. She's sorry that she had neglected to send them. So unfortunately, I had um, trusted her word of sending them over and did not know they were public. So I would just ask if me and our neighborhood could have time to look over the notes as you all did together before we would proceed with the Northern Natural Gas Appeal. I understand. And maybe just a quick point of clarification. Are we time bound on the appeal? I know the appeal had to be filed within a certain amount of time. Are we time, time bound to address that this evening? Or if the appellant wanted to postpone that, is that something that we would have discretion to do? I think it was a question for staff. Your Honor, Council, um, you do have the discretion to um, table the item to the next meeting or you know a, a, a meeting date specific. Um, just a point of clarification from a procedural perspective, what is required under the law is notice of the meeting. So um, the appellants need to receive a notice that we will be hearing this topic um, this evening. And that, I believe, is a 10-day notice under the um, uh, statute and code. Um, that's different from the materials that would be in your council packet there is no obligation actually to send those materials to the appellant. Um, that's not part of the procedure. That I'm not weighing in on whether or not they need more time with the materials, just making it clear that under law, that's not the requirement. The requirement is that they have notice of the hearing. Understood. And notice was given, it's just not the materials, just to be clear. Um, yes, that is. A notice was given to the app, um, appellants. Just as a reminder to the council, it's an appellant hearing, not a public hearing, Understood. like the planning commission level. So. Understood. Um, so why don't, we why don't we proceed with the meeting, um, give you an opportunity, um, the appellant an opportunity to decide if you want us to hear that tonight or if you wanted to approach council and we get to this agenda item and ask for um, it to be tabled. That's something that I'm open to council considering. Um, and let's, if, if that's okay, I'd like to proceed in that manner of let's have that conversation when we get to that agenda item. Okay, with that said, is there anybody that else that would like to speak in open forum this evening on any topic? Please, and could you come to the podium, please? I feel like I walked into a hornet's nest, so, because my subject has nothing to do with It's not a hornet's nest, <laughs> it's just city council. Welcome. Hi, my name is Jeff Benson, I live at uh, Jody Avenue North, and I did sign in on the sheet so you have my Understood. full address on there. I've been a resident here for 29 years. 
Uh, I only had two subjects I wanted to mention and then two questions I wanted to ask. Uh, the first one I wanted to mention was, um, I, I just, it's, I've been thinking about uh, bringing this up for a long time, but um, in, my, in the years when I first got here, uh, we had uh, the Washington County Sheriff was the police department that covered the old township where I live now. And honestly, I used to see the county sheriff driving through the neighborhood at least once a week. But I gotta tell you, in the last two years, I have yet to see a Forest Lake police car come through my neighborhood. They, they never patrol out there. I mean, I, I just feel like I'm paying a lot of money for a police department, and I don't, I don't get any service. Not that I'm calling them for service, but they should at least be patrolling in my neighborhood. And I, I never see anybody out there. I've seen them drive down like 202nd Street, and they, they go down to about uh, Harrow Avenue or so, and then they turn and they head back into town. Nobody goes all the way out to Jody Avenue. The second one is my neighborhood. After it was the township, the city annexed them. We were all, we were all uh, uh, assessed thousands of dollars to blacktop our gravel road. We're only talking three blocks in my neighborhood. But we've paid for the money on the promise from the city council at that time that the road would be maintained, that we had to pay one time only and it'd be maintained. Well, the road is falling apart. I mean, it is everywhere. I mean, it's just breaking up, it's falling apart. I, I, I contacted the, um, Mr. Adams last year and I said, Are you gonna, is somebody gonna fix this road? And his short answer was no. And then he sent me a map of, I don't know, something, I don't know what it was called, some Michigan map, you know, that said, this is the roads that be repaired or whatever, I don't know what they mean. All I wanted was to be patched. I didn't say they had to replace the road, I just wanted to patch. And he said no. They did come out late in the fall and they put down some cold patch in two places, which within a month it all broke up and it was gone. And this, this year, I'm, I'm driving around the city of Forest Lake and I'm seeing hot patches on all the roads in the city of Forest Lake. Yet out where I live, nobody's, nobody's been out there to do anything and the road is falling apart. And I wanna get it fixed, that's all I'm asking for. What, what does it take to get somebody to come out and do a hot patch? That's what I wanna know. I mean, I've asked, I've asked again this year and I was told the same thing, no. So that was, that's my two comments and my two questions, so Understood. thank you. Thank you so much. Can somebody get back to Mr. Benson? Um, we can, I can pass on some information. Yep, we will. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to speak in open forum this evening? All right, seeing that, we'll bring the agenda back to council. Council, for your consideration tonight is consent agenda items 6A through 6K, and um, looking for a motion or any changes to the consent agenda. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda A through K. There's a motion, is there a second? Second. A motion and a second. All those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Oppose and motion carries. All right, we are moving on to our regular agenda and our first item this evening is item 7A, the Northern Nat Natural Gas Appeal. Um, maybe given the feedback that we heard as part of open forum, um, typically we would start with council presentation of the appeal facts and then we would move into the actual hearing from the appellant. Um, I guess maybe I would ask the appellant if they're requesting this to be tabled to a future meeting. Um, I know we're kind of making a decision on the fly here, but I want you to feel prepared and I want you to, f the, I think it would be a goal for everybody for, to have a good appeal. Um, and if, if delaying that until our next regular council meeting provides for that timeline, I'd rather give for that timeline. There is an active project that is being considered um, that has, you know, been condition or has been approved by um, our planning commission. So this is the appeal to that approval. Um, it's more important to me that we get this right. And I, I guess if the appellant is requesting a extension, I'm happy to hear that. But I'd like to hear from the appellant if you would approach the podium. So it sounds like because it was previously approved, it's already being granted and the more that we would wait for us as a neighborhood to collectively come to a decision, uh, there'd still be ongoing work. Is that correct? I'm not sure if the project has actually started or um, I guess maybe the question would be to ask staff, Do are we aware of um, any project impact of of postponing an appeal hearing. Um, is there any activity that we would know and, and maybe it's unknown to us if there are activities that would be delayed? Is that a 
fair I would, question. I would defer to legal counsel of whether or not this is subject to the 60-day rule. Um, we just have to ch double check our 60-day timeline. Um, as a reminder, the CUP is for the work that's in the floodplain. So any work that's outside of the floodplain isn't permitted by the city of, St or the city of Forest mm -hmm. Lake, and so therefore we wouldn't, um, this, these actions wouldn't prevent other work from occurring in those areas. Does that make sense? Yeah, so it sounds like there's no knowledge to any of you of like a time frame for boring through the lake. Would that the be right? Boring through the lake cannot occur in, um, without a conditional. All right, I'm just permit. making sure that it wasn't still like technically approved and that if the appeal had actually hindered it. It was approved, but the appeal stopped the approval. Okay. All right. So is there a timeline of our appeal, like days or date-wise, that we would need to make, like accommodate a deadline before it expires and it would render us as like basically forfeiting? Amanda, is that something you would? Your, your counsel, um, so in a situation like this, um, <laughs> 50, the, the statute is 1599 that talks about 60 day clocks for certain zoning approvals. Um, it is silent on appeals for those approvals. There is some case law, I, I don't have it in front of me and I don't like to do math at the table. Um, but if my memory um, serves, I, there is some like kind of stopping of the clock for an appeal, but that's generally when you have, you're appealing a denial in a situation where you've, you're appealing an approval, so there is a approval. Um, I think that there's some, if I recall, I believe the case law is a little more gray about that. So I would want to investigate. What we could potentially do is, um, you can do a, a, an extension to the 60 day clock, so you have 60 days to approve most zoning things, um, but you are able as a city to request an additional 60 days if necessary um, for a variety of reasons. You know, we, we've done it before and, and this would obviously be one of those types of um, situations where we may need to do that. Um, I'm just not sure right now exactly procedurally what that would look like. Madam Mayor, if I may just add to that. Um, the appeals were made um, the 16th and 17th of May, so we would, um, we're still well within the 60-day timeline. Your July 10th meeting date would also fall within that timeline. So ultimately, um, to the I, I guess to the appellant, this is your appeal, and so I want this very much to be your decision. We're happy to hear the appeal tonight if you want to do tonight. It does sound like you are. we are within our 60-day timeline to hear an appeal on our July 10th meeting. And so if you wanted to us to table this this evening and come back on July 10th, there is a path for you to do so. But most importantly, I want it to be your decision um, because it is your appeal. All right, one last question. Um, you'd mentioned this is an opportunity for Richard and I to present. Does that mean that there are very few or if not any that have not already read or seen any of the graphs or the body of the appeals in its entity? So I can speak to our, our, I can speak a little bit maybe to our packet process. So the packet of information that you just received was sent to council on Thursday evening. Um, it is between Thursday evening and tonight that council has an opportunity to review that packet um, and review information. I'm not going to attest that everybody has read every word of that packet, but the packet was presented to us on Thursday. Um, and also part of that packet is the reference to the planning commission meetings. And so personally, I've watched that planning commission meeting. I can't speak to if everyone has, but there has been opportunity to, for, for us to get up to speed. But again, it's your appeal. And so it's your presentation of the information that tonight, that is your opportunity to present however you want to present that information to us. Um, your appeal that's in the packet is very thorough, and so I personally appreciated that. Um, but if you, again, this is your time, and so I, I want you to feel like you've got the opportunity to present the information that's important to you. Yes, and I'd like to, with the entirety of it, that's why I just, I didn't want to read something off from the appeal. Understood. Like the whole thing, if you guys had or hadn't already have gone through it, Absolutely you know, went through it. Yeah. So we've 
we've seen had an opportunity to review that okay. whole packet and Sorry, so I just asked because yeah. I never did receive back the last signing of the page that you guys had all read it included in the packets were um, uh, requests for signatures that you'd received the packet and the Planning Commission had received the packets staff didn't um, seek out those signatures out of any okay. of the members of the so, yeah I just, just all I asked was just to make typically sure. not a process we would follow um, we can kind of commit to when the information is available, but it would be really unusual for us to like attest that we've reviewed the packet okay. at a certain timeline. All right. I appreciate you asking. It'd yeah, be an no, unusual response I just, response before I make a decision on the spur of the moment, Understood. I'd okay. just like to like thoroughly ask any questions, you know, to prohibit any hindrance. Um, but it sounds like I should probably read the entire packet just to make sure. Go ahead. Your Honor, if I, if I may, um, just uh, so the, the appeal is the applicant's appeal. Um, the city staff is not appealing anything. The applicant himself is not appealing something. This is the, the um, as I understand it, neighbors or, or like somewhat some, you know, local um, neighborhood. And so in your packet, um, what is in those documents, and I, I know that you've read them, but I, I'm mostly sharing it for the public, is um, a summary of what happened at the Planning Commission meeting. Absolutely no opinion offered on what happened at the Planning Commission meeting. My, I wrote the memo, and the memo is 100% just uh, me re <laughs> just regurgitating um, what Planning Commission already determined and then helping you just track here's the, the laws, here's the rules in the city code that, is, that cover a CUP and here's the criteria that you look at. The memo does not ever mm -hmm. suggest that you vote one way or the other on this appeal because it is not our burden, it is the appellant's burden. And then I believe there's about 160 pages of documents from the two appellants, both um, uh, Richard, um, sorry, how do you pronounce your last name? Joe. Jelfs, thank you. Mr. Jelfs and um, Ms. Jelfs, all of their documents are in the packet as well. And so that is sort of the persuasive information or the, ar you know, the argument essentially, right? Um, putting forth the argument as to why the Planning Commission may have gotten it wrong on the CUP. I'm not suggesting that they got it wrong. Um, that's what the appellant is here tonight to argue. Um, even if they didn't argue a single word tonight, every single word in the packet is already on the public record as um, the, for this appeal. Um, so from the perspective, I guess, of um, where the appellants sit, they d there isn't anything in that packet that, frankly, they need to know because it's already stuff that they either provided or it's just a summary of what they would have already seen at the Planning Commission meeting. Does that make sense? It does make sense, yes. I, I think also, just clar point of clarification, um, the, the information that is part of the appeal has, is already in the packet and has been provided. The opportunity to speak and address council is to summarize that information, to have a discussion of those points, we're not expecting you to read every word of the appeal or to, there's there's a lot of information. So typically the appeal is more of a summary of key points and then a discussion of council and opportunity to address questions or um, more of a summary of what's already in the packet. But again, I appreciate that you were expecting something earlier than what was delivered and I just wanna make sure that you have time to be prepared. So I'm mainly concerned of the rest of the neighborhood that wasn't able to make it this evening um, because it is an entire neighborhood and not just my life that would be jeopardized. I feel that it would just be me looking out for them as well as I have through the whole process, just make sure that we all collectively, you know, have an input or can, you know, talk about this because um, there are multiple lives on the line that could be jeopardized by a decision that you all make this evening. So um, I would just like to maybe postpone it to July 10th 
make and sure that all the wives would be accounted for with being voiced. Under, understood. So with that information, Council, I would move that Council table this agenda item until our July 10th meeting. Is there a second? A second. A motion and a second. There is not a discussion on a table item, and so we will call the vote. Is there um, There's a motion and a second. All those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Oppose. And this item is tabled until July 10th. Thank you for being here this evening. And also, staff can be, if you have questions between now and then, staff can be a, of assistance if you have other questions about how July 10th might, what that might look like. Mayor Bain, may I also, Go, yes, please. May I just note that no new materials would be presented uh, for the July 10th meeting. It would just be the exact same materials that are in your packet this evening. That is a great point of clarification. So the information that'll be in council's packet is going to be the same as July 10th. What the applicant wants to, what you want to tell us on July 10th, certainly between now and then, that is that is your plan to put together. Um, but the information that you see now is complete and that is what we will be using as a point of reference for the 10th meeting. I think you may have had a follow-up question. If, you could just so we can hear you go to that yeah, podium. Thank you. Richard Jelfs of 1815 July Ave North, Forest Lake. Uh, just ask now, you know, if you guys haven't uh, between now and then, do take the time and read through our appeals. Um, it's going to summarize, obviously, our points. So uh, the time's available now, and I, f I feel like that would allow everyone to come prepared. Understood. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Okay. Council, moving to our next agenda item is 7B, the 2023 to 2027 draft agreement for the Lake Center for Youth and Families. And Council, I believe the version that's in your packet may have been updated with um, a more recent version that was just passed. Um, and Patrick, we'll let you take this. Yes, uh, if you, the Council recalls the uh, Executive Director of the Lake Center for Youth and Family came and asking for funding, as they usually do on an annual basis. It was the council's uh, desire that we enter into a longer term agreement. Uh, after a follow up conversation with uh, the Lake Center Youth and Family uh, Director, uh, she also note no, um, talked to me about the struggles that they're having on getting their grant funding. It's starting, their grant funding is starting to fall away, uh, and the, the need for them for funding, additional funding, is greater than it even was when. Uh, she presented uh, her case to you earlier. Uh, so being that the council asked for a five-year agreement and speaking with uh, Linda about what kind of um, funding this sh it should take, uh, I've enclosed the funding that calls for an increase this year uh, to $30,000, up from the $17,000 that we have funded them since I think it was 2008, I believe was the it's been studied that long. Uh, and then I've increased it annually uh, to try to, to have them keep up with what they need to do with, with the potential loss of future grant money. Um, and it ca caps out at 55000 in 2027. Um, there's, the big jumps are between 23 and 24 and 25. And then um, it's just a modest increase after that. We're trying to get them to a sustainable where we hit about 3% or approximately 3 to 5% every year. So uh, that was the, the goal of this type of function. Um, and I, I believe the budget can afford to take this, uh, especially reflecting on the services that they provide. Thank you, Patrick. Council, questions for Patrick? Thoughts on the agreement? Again, I think the most notable Notable change from our prior year is really the amount. Um, I, just some thoughts. You know, this is a contract that has seen very little change over many, many years. Um, you know, we, we are we were made aware of just the the kind of the current funding situation that this Lake Center for Youth and Families um, is in. Um, their you know grant funding becoming less and less stable is. Concerning, um, I think we should, as a city, need to be a foundational support. If they didn't exist, we would want them to exist. This is the kind of alternative, um, I almost said dispute resolution. It's not really a dispute resolution, but the kind of the alternative path that we, I think, want young people to have in our community. And so I just think, you know, us doing our part by having a substantial increase is important. Um, 
it, and you know, moving to a five-year agreement gives them some stability. So I'm happy to support this, but also very open to feedback on what is the right amount, what's the right pace of growth, you know, what should our you know size of our impact be to this organization. So I know we talked about this earlier. I just couldn't remember exactly what we talked about for numbers at that time. Could you refresh my memory? Uh, Patrick, uh, the numbers we, we started initially we started talking about twenty five thousand. Uh, that's the number. Uh, going from seventeen and and that was a reaction again as well to that the seventeen thousand had been in place for quite a long time, and I believe the number is two th 28, 2008 was the last time I think either that or twelve, but one but quite a while. So uh, and then once we put that into place, uh, I talked to Linda again. And uh, she had some concerns about recent information about grant funding that they're having trouble with and that she expects to have fall off. And just the continuing struggle of any nonprofit to continue their funding through grants, uh, it's, it's a big job for any nonprofit to do that. Um, and based on that and the work that they do and the council seemed very positive about the work that this organization does for the community and that the majority of the uh, their clientele are Forest Lake residents. Uh, this seemed to be an appropriate number without going too crazy and without really impacting the budget substantially. And it gives us time to, to slowly go up to a funding level that seems to be appropriate. Yeah, it's really support. Oh, yeah. And this is a general fund thing? It's, it's a general fund, yes. Yeah. General fund and is it specific police budget? Is that where it lands? I think it's its own public budget public item. safety. Is it its own? <clears throat> yes, it's it's in its own public. Okay. Yep. Go ahead, uh, Patrick. So in that conversation you just recently had with her, is she concerned with what's changed since she presented that <clears throat> this might not be enough then, or what was the? No, she's actually satisfied with this portion. Okay. It was the, it was you know going from seventeen thousand to twenty five thousand. Not that great of an increase, based on a again the history of how long we've been funding this, but services and everything else and the grant funding. So, I think she was very happy to see. She understands budgeting. She understands the process that we can't just jump from seventeen to fifty-five thousand. So, uh, by doing it this way, it 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 kills basically two birds with one stone. So it gives you a five-year agreement that we don't have to come back, and and it gives her. Uh, the ability to better budget and know that those are going to be the funds, and then also it slowly increases from the uh, from the thirty-five thousand up to the twenty-five. So you, uh, as the city, as the city, doesn't have an immediate huge jump in the budget. So I, w I had an opportunity to speak with Linda on this, um, and she also mentioned that um, although we're the largest you know, city that is served, they do receive funding from other cities as well, and cities, t cities tend to move in packs, and so part of us making this five-year commitment also provides her just a little bit of additional information to bring back to some other comparison communities that might help overall, which was part of why having some five-year commitment was helpful. I, th I think it would help us all, too, just, uh, you know, I'm in support of this, don't get me wrong, I, I think it just would really help us all, too, to look at their budget, you know, see what, where are we spending the money and and what the total budget is and those those are pretty simple things I would think. Yeah, and the nice thing about this is it's a local agency where local money is going to go to. It's not giving money to some mm -hmm. countywide or statewide organization. It's really a one-on-one -on -one local, and that's I think that's really the nice thing about this particular organization and this particular funding is that it stays. It's from the community and stays in the community for the most part. I know that they've done a lot of good in this city. There's no question about that. Uh, from all reports that I have, they are a tremendous organization and a very well-run organization. Any other questions or anybody ready to make a motion for on this item? We have the verbiage. I make a motion that we... Uh, Go forward with the uh, FY 2023 to FY 2027 contribution agreement with between the City of Forest Lake and the Lake Center for Youth and Families. I'll second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Oppose. And motion carries.
All right, that is the end of our planned regular agenda this evening. Um, and we can move into staff updates, and we'll start with Karen. Thank you, Mayor Bain. I don't have any updates at this time, but I have to answer any questions. Okay. Dan. Uh, the only update I have is that this is my last council meeting with the city of Forest Lake. Um, do want to thank council for all the opportunities you guys have given me over the past nine and a half years. Um, it's definitely bittersweet leaving Forest Lake. I do have a few days left, though. I'm here officially through July 5th, but this is my last official council meeting. So again, thank you for the, all, all the opportunities over the past nine and a half years. Very good. Thank you, Dan. Yes. It's been Thanks for all your hard work, great, Dan. great working with you, and best of luck in Lindstrom. And we really appreciate all of the dedication and hard work you've done. So much appreciated. Good luck. Thanks. Or look, I should say we would look forward to working with you in your capacity in Lindstrom, right? I, mean, I was going to say, we're not, it's not that far down Highway 8, so there's, right. some, there's going to be some overlap that happens. Paths there. will cross, yeah. for sure. Yeah. All right. Abby. Um, I just wanted to note that with uh, Arts in the Park in full swing, we are, uh, it is appearing that we're having some higher than um, average attendance each week, even some of those lesser known bands. It just seems like a lot more people are coming out to the park to listen to music. So other than that, I don't have any other updates. Thank you, Abby. Patrick. Um, I have a few things. I would actually like to thank Dan for him make, for he making my job a lot easier than it was, especially one of my first couple of years here. Uh, I think Lindstrom is uh, very fortunate uh, to get him, and I'm sure he'll be a great success there. Um, second is I attended the Minnesota League conference last week, uh, trying to, like everyone else, catch up on all the new legislation things like that. So we've got a little more information on uh, funding and, and things like that. Uh, not any information yet on any of the cannabis bills because the, they're still working on those. And I do have a question for the council. The chamber golf outing is July 24th, which is a council meeting night. And I know there are participants both on council and staff that uh, go to that golf outing and wondering if we still should have a meeting on the 24th or change it to a different date like Tuesday. I feel like we have precedent here and I feel like precedent has, we've I think changed we before. have changed that we've either canceled the meeting or we have changed it to Tuesday. Um, if we change it to Tuesday, is that just get noticed as a special meeting instead and we put some advance notice out if we're going to yes. do that now? Yes, correct. Um, and we have, and that is also, that is not an EDA night in that EDA is typically meeting the first, the first Monday yeah. or the, the, the first meeting, second Monday of, of the month. Um, my preference would, I guess, on the fly to be to move that meeting to be the 20, um, Tuesday the 25th. Is that concurrence? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we happen to be in a series of light agenda evening, you know, certainly that's something we could consider, but I'd rather us at least have a, me a meeting noted for the 25th. Um, we have had very few meetings lately where it's that light of an agenda. Um, you, so let's plan for the 25th. We will plan for the 25th, and if it's a very light agenda, possibly a canceled meeting. Excellent. Thank you. That's very all good. I have. Karen, could you start including that in the weekly you newsletter? <laughs> all right, excellent. And red letters. I know you guys love all my notifications <laughs> I send Thank you. Thank you. We're predictable. Amanda. No updates. All right. Dave. No updates. Ryan. Uh, Mayor, City Council, just want to put it on your radar that we're looking at scheduling next public outreach meeting for County State Aid Highway 32 or 11th Avenue, August 21st. That'd be before your city council workshop that night uh, from 4.30 to 6.30. So we're looking at that as our next public engagement meeting for County State Aid Highway 32, August 21st. And that would be before a workshop. Um, is that, and that typically is invite sent to adjoining property owners? Yep, that... they'll do the same process that they had before. Uh, mailers, social media, working with the city and our social media platform too. Perfect. And that's 11th Avenue. Correct. Very good. Thank you. Chief Peterson. Yeah, Mayor and City Council members, good evening. Um, we held our Forest Lake uh, Safety Camp 
um, since our last city council meeting and it was well received and uh, went off without a hitch. And I wanna thank all the uh, businesses, the donors and supporters and volunteers that assist with that great event. Uh, we're gearing up for the um, July 4th celebration and festivities and we're ready for that. So we're excited about um, a safe and successful event this year and um, last Friday, uh, Forest Lake police officers and some family members uh, participated in the Special Olympics Minnesota Law Enforcement Torch Run. Um, it was fun uh, seeing people out there. There were a few people cheering us on uh, coming through town. So that's always an exciting event and supporting Special Olympics. And that's all I have for you. Very good. Thank you, Chief. And Kevin. No updates from finance. Let's move to um, council updates. We'll start with council member Roberts. Uh, no updates today. All right. Council member Valento. Just wanna say that Dan, you will be missed. Um, I appreciated you a lot when I first started, especially with cable commission, you gave great information. Um, and it is definitely bittersweet, but you'll do great in Lindstrom. And hopefully we'll see you soon. Yeah, I'll be around. <laughs> council member Husnick. Uh, same thing, I have no other updates except to thanks Dan for all the years he's been here, plus uh, working with the airport commission and that kind of thing too, so uh, it's been a kind of a double okay. thing for me, so thanks for all the years. Dan, we might even pop in on you over there and make sure you're doing okay. You gotta keep me in line, you gotta keep me in line, Sam. <laughs> Councilmember Husnick doesn't have enough city meetings to attend. <laughs> <laughs> Councilmember Erickson. Yeah, I just echo that, I've sure enjoyed working with you these last few years, Dan, appreciate it. Uh, just a quick update for me. Um, I know we have a couple of commission um, positions that are open. Um, having a conversation actually right now with um, kind of what does that both the appointment process and the onboarding process look like um, and kind of what should be the right timing for that. Um, Abby in particular has had some great feedback around how that appointment process and also just follow up on the onboarding, um, some suggestions for improvement. Um, that doesn't necessarily prevent us from moving forward with some of those appointments. Um, in particular, we still have an open position on the EDA. We also have um, an open position on the Planning Commission that recently opened up, um, and we still have the ongoing discussion about what we are doing with the Park Commission. Park Commission is a little bit of a, a you know, different animal in that it is a entirely new group and reappointed. Um, there are some park policy things that we're discussing on, on um, maybe potentially getting kind of started on before we may wanna do a, a full appointment. And then also I'm really looking forward to some council feedback um, probably in July when we start to see updates of the 10 year plan and just have a little bit more discussion on where are we with budget in particular to the park board or in park commission. I can't say park board, park commission. Um, so just I want to acknowledge that those are still open um, and kind of each taking its own trajectory, but again, want to acknowledge that it's just not forgotten. Um, also, um, Dan, again, uh, many, many thanks and good luck to you. And also just a great opportunity to wish everyone a great 4th of July. Um, many thanks to the Legion. They do hours and hours and hours of work prior to this event. It's also a significant event for all of our city staff. Um, so just look forward to always what's a fun, great weekend in Forest Lake. So um, have a great, safe 4th of July, and I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signal by saying aye. 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 Oppose, and we're adjourned. Thank you, everyone.